Welcome to the Sci-Fi Express Lane. Jeff Carroll, Sci-Fi Writer, all that, you know, accolades. Today I want to just respond. This is a response video, but it's really reiterating something that I say all the time. Um, <clears throat> one of my next books, I don't know which one I'm going to get around to finishing, um, really all depends on time, is called I Love Sci-Fi. And it's going to be a collection of short stories. I really only want to write one more short story, but I'm fine with publishing it the way it is now. But what is holding up the book is um, just writing, deciding which essays I want to put in. Because it's going to be a survey in why I love science fiction. And um, I want to put some essays in there answering that question. And so, you know, of course I want to talk about old sci-fi and from the 70s and sci-fi that wasn't, you know, the pre-Black Panther era film and television and, and um, books and um, and comics. So I want to, you know, kind of do a modest review, but um, I just haven't gotten around to it. However, one of the questions that I want to answer or one of the aspects I want to explain is why I love black sci-fi. You know, of course I'm a black person and that goes without saying, but um, I was watching an interview between Wanda Sykes and Nia Long, and Nia Long um, said uh, she doesn't like the term black. She feels that an element of black, the word black, to use to describe a film or a project that she's involved in holds black people back holds the artist back. And we've heard this, you know, before, you know, there was, you, you, you know, in the 90s, you know, oh, it's just a black film. Oh, um, like black was some type of subcategory, you know what I'm saying? And um, she was on there, I'm assuming, to promote this movie that she uh, plays the mother of Laura London, who is dating um, or in a relationship with Jonah Hill, who's a white actor, and the father is Eddie Murphy. So um, she's Eddie Murphy's wife or baby mother or whatever. You know, maybe they share custody, I have no idea. Um, anyway, I'm assuming the film was classified as black or not. It is produced by Kenya Burris, the one from Blackish. Um, which I really like, entangle, Entanglement, I think. It was an exploitation of the new term, but the uh, animated show was real good. So anyway, um, I don't know whether they wanted to get it to be called a white film because they had Jonah Hill in it. It really seems interesting because it seems like it's an opposite of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? with Sidney Poitier, where he played a black guy, which he is black, there's no way to play anything else, uh, but a black guy who's marrying a white woman and the white couple was having a hard time dealing with it. I think it's cool social play, so I don't hate on that, um, but for me, I was going back to the hate on black, right? Uh, I, uh, people ask me all the time why I call myself a black science fiction writer. You know, you don't have to call yourself a black science fiction writer. You're right. I don't even have to call myself a science fiction writer, to be honest. But I call myself a science fiction writer, a horror writer, a black science fiction writer, a hip-hop um, sci-fi writer, hip-hop filmmaker, a horror filmmaker, a B-movie filmmaker. All those titles work, but I, because I don't have problems with them. I call myself a black science fiction writer because I think it best describes my writing. And why do I think it best describes it? I think there are, we live in a multicultural country. No doubt. I think the mainstream culture has been dominated by white Americans, European Americans. That said, because it's multicultural, I think there are different cultural expressions and point of views that exist that are enough to differentiate 
the values. I worked in comedy and poetry. And in those arts, you could clearly see the difference between a black comedian and a white comedian. Not just to say only and all, but you could even tell the difference between a black club with a lot of that black patrons going to it and a club with a lot of white patrons going to it. There were even comedians and even poets that did different types of poems and jokes and told them and performed them in different ways when they were in these different clubs. My position is that exists because we have different cultural energies. No matter what our nationality is, Indian Americans, indigenous Indian Americans, uh, um, Asian Americans, whether they're Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, Chinese, um, African American, European Americans, I'm even tell you Jewish uh, European Americans, um, what do you call it, are different than Italian Americans, than they're different than Russian Americans. Now, there's some similarities, right? Race is a factor, but cultural elements and geography, to me, play more of a, a, a role. Um, Caribbean, no matter whether they're Spanish, French, or English speaking, have a lot more in common with each other in every aspect than uh, Russian, than uh, um, um, I guess European American, you know? Um, so that's element of their culture overlaps into their art and their telling of their stories. So for me, I tell my stories like an African American. I tell my stories like a black person, which in this context means the same as African American. Uh, we're not talking about a black from Britain. We're not talking about black from Africa. We're not talking about black from South America. We're talking about African Americans. So when I think of, uh, what do you call it, um, Nia Long, I think, yo, in reality, she's missing the point of why we call ourselves black. We want people to understand that there is a black storytelling energy, no matter whether it's a white comic in a black club or not, it's a black club. It's a black catered energy. Now, does it mean only black people can enjoy it? Hey, get out of here. No way. Doesn't mean that. Black people have been enjoying white dominated stories since forever. You know, I love uh, one of my favorite movies is, I just talked about it, so I'm mentioning it. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I think there was one black person in there, okay? And probably he was in the beginning, the store clerk. <laughs> um, beyond that, you know, it's white comedy, it's a white actor, but I like it. You understand? I think V for Vendetta is another one, give you some serious drama. I don't think there was any black people in that. I'm not mad at it. I enjoyed it. You know, um, I even like their sci-fi, right? I, one of my favorite science fiction pictures is Starship Troopers. I love, you know, now Star Wars had um, Lando Calrissian in it, but, uh, but when it first started, and it's very much you know, a European story. It's European story arc and everything. So as we emerge ourselves deeper into this post-Black Panther era, you will start to see more black science fiction. Um, you will see, you know, even with the, you know, Black Panther was part of this uh, wave of black films. I mean, in the 90s, we could count like three years with like three black films released in theaters. But as we started getting closer to 2018, um, we started seeing like 10, 15, I think 2020, 2019 had like 20 black films released in theaters. That's ridiculous. Amazing. I'm loving it. But um, we're just seeing so much content now, especially now with, with Tubi. Um, I'm, I'm a part of that. 
you know, um, Gold Digger Killer, go check it out. It's one of Tubi's top 25, 30 black films, all right? Um, so, and they, they're releasing black films every day. It's going in like Maverick and, and York used to dominate the VHS era. So um, they're just flooding it with content, which is beautiful because I want to do another film and this will help me do it. Um, anyway, um, those films, the stories, just like the ushered in era of, of street lit, right? Those were black storytelling styles. The street lit wasn't gatekeeping and black writers that got picked by um, white publishers. It wasn't no gatekeepers. When you think about Maverick Films and, and some of the independent film companies, Image, you know, that were part of the black uh, DVD boom, they, they were greenlit independent films. These were people producing them themselves. They wasn't Hollywood. They weren't Hollywood produced films. So yeah, these distribution companies took them um, and 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 made more money off of them. But they didn't greenlight them. You know, until they started seeing that they were making money, they might have greenlit and put some money. But I don't know anybody. You know, I don't know anybody that put money. But I don't know Maverick. He probably probably changed the um, the energy. But nah, black produced films. You know, are straight out the independent person, the independent creator's ideas. So, um, again, you know, black is not. I actually think, you know, on the other side of all of this, I think that, you know, with especially with science fiction, there's so many storylines that have already been told that these people are doing over and over and over again. That um, I'm thinking. The, the, the fresh turf is um, black science fiction, black storylines, black um, cast. So for that, um, I, I I think, you know, it's a win. I think black science fiction is the future just because of the um, imagination that um, uh, black science fiction uh, brings. So anyway, that's that's my opinion of it all. Um, I have no problem with black uh, being used. I don't think it holds anybody back, and I think it's a part of the future. All right, out of here. Peace.